This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculously fast. Oh my god! <laughs> comes on boost and it just wants to take off into space. This video is sponsored by Rockform. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later in the show. It's crazy effortless through a corner. These nice light sweepers are where it lives. What a weird package this is. I'm really not sure whether or not I'm gelling with it or whether it's just too deeply confusing for me. It's interesting. It's for somebody, but it's not for me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Burger King, or at least their parking lot, for a, another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, Yam handed me the keys to this here MV Gusta Turismo Veloce Luso 800 Smart Clutch System Motorcycle from Eurocycle. And uh, he was like, you're an ADV dad in training. Why don't you go take this out and see what it's all about? And uh, it's exactly what we're going to go do. So stay tuned and we're going to see if this thing is, uh, if it's cool or not. Now, as y'all can see at home, this motorcycle was supplied to us by the good folks over at Eurocycle. If you're interested in getting yourself a fancy MV Agusta, you want it sent straight to your door because you can now buy motorcycles online. Click that link down in the description below. Head over to Eurocycle. Check out all kinds of crazy motorcycles like this, the Dragster 800 RC that we had in the shop, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Click that link down below. Check out everything they got, and they will ship a motorcycle direct to your door. How cool is that? Now, let's take a minute to think about this here MV Agusta Turismo Veloce Luso 800. Okay. So... This motorcycle has the smart clutch system on it, which, if we go over here and look, basically amounts to what is a recluse clutch, which is weird. I've never ridden a motorcycle with a recluse clutch, and I've ridden it over here to this here parking lot, and it's deeply confusing and very strange to me. And I don't understand what this pedal here is for. It's like a second brake pedal. I don't, I don't get it. Maybe y'all can tell me down in the comments what that's for. Uh, preload here, I'm assuming that's preload, but the thing is, is we have some adjustable suspension goodness in here, right? So we pull this on and uh, we can set our suspension over here. I had it set for two riders just because I wanted to feel what it was like. I'm not sure if it's actually making any difference or not on the motorcycle, I can't tell. But maybe that's the point. Maybe it's so good that I can't tell. Then we have big old bags on here, which are big enough to fit as many Burger King sandwiches in here as you possibly could eat, I suppose, or want to eat. We got a big Garmin on here like the BMWs and uh, a couple of other little sport touring features. This is a sport touring motorcycle, not like a full-on ADV bike. That is a... 17 inch front end, 17 inch rear, uh, very street biased rubber, but we still have a nice bit of a edge there. So I suppose it does incline itself to sporting a little bit, but uh, that's enough talking about it. Let's get it out on the road. And uh, I'm gonna literally show you what it, what it feels like riding this thing. Okay, so you turn it on, you gotta say that you agree, and then you view the map. It's just, this is just like the BMW that I rode. And then, let's see, do I even need to pull in the clutch? Yeah, okay, I need to pull in the clutch to start it. And then it starts, and then you don't need the clutch anymore. No clutch, just roll on the throttle, and then come to a stop. Let's show that again. Again, no clutch. I'm just sitting here, and I roll on the throttle, and it goes forward. That's so bizarre to me. It feels so weird. Uh, I also don't understand why, like, I'm not even sure if I can find neutral on this thing. Like, can I, can I find neutral while the bike is on? Well, that's second gear. 
Oh, the lights also come on if you hold the brake too long. I'm not sure what that's all about. Yeah, I can't find neutral. It's really weird. Another thing that's really weird, I don't know if I can change the map. I don't know if there's a map button or not. No clue. Can't find it if there is one. Anywho, let's get on the road. Let's see what this thing's all about. Man, guys, it is so weird. I, I literally just left that parking lot and I can't break the habit of not pulling in the clutch. I. I feel like going to this is going to be so foreign for so many different motorcyclists. And I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet. We're going to have to see if uh, if I can actually understand what, what it's all about. Because, again, I'm so used to just sitting here with the bike in gear. And then if I'm letting the clutch out, then I need to put it down into first gear to get going. But no, I'm sitting here in first gear. And if I hold the brake... Just wait for it. Those lights on the top of the screen are going to light up. And it's like it's angry at me for doing the things that you're normally supposed to do on a motorcycle. All right, but let's see how it pulls. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm not sure how much that... I'm not sure what that feels like to me. That feels like... That feels like somewhere between... I mean, that feels pretty mt 9 y to me. I have no idea what the specs are on this motorcycle. I'll pull over and deal with the specs later after I give you my initial impressions. Because I think that'll be fun. It'll be fun to see how the specs feel compared to my complete raw first impressions on this motorcycle. Yeah, that's fun. Okay, that's cool. It's not nearly as angry as the other MV. Um, obviously, it's not as, you know, coked out. But, I mean, it has, it has plenty of character still in the way that it makes power, and it's got a good sound. But, I mean, it's got a ton of punch. I mean, it's... It's still a fast motorcycle. It's not slow by any means. I'm kind of surprised that, you know, I, I look at it and it doesn't look very fast. Uh, it just kind of looks like, you know, a big, uh, it, it looks like a, you know, a smallish adventure bike. But, you know, look at it and I'm like, yeah, speed. And then you roll on the throttle and you're like, okay, that's that's pretty good. I can get with that. And just through this long sweeper here, it's handling really nice. It's holding a line really, really well. The suspension is really, really odd to me because if it's preload up front, it's only preload in this leg. And then this is fully adjustable or it's adjustable in some way, shape or form. And then you have preload manual in the back. All right, let's get out on the highway, shall we, and see how it feels, kind of in its element. I feel like sport touring, you got to test them out on the highway before we get to the sport. So let's see what it's like uh, for a general highway cruise. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. So you're cruising around on your fancy sport touring dad mobile and you don't have a GPS bracket because that was going to be an extra grand plus the monthly subscription to identify the nearest Starbucks so you can never miss a bragging opportunity. What are you going to do? Use a paper map like it's 1940? No, just grab yourself a rock form case and phone mount combo. It's the best way to mount your phone to your handlebar on any motorcycle under the sun. They've got handlebar mounts for normal bikes and stem mounts for squid missiles. They've also got a ton of accessories for your phone like screen protectors, sport rings, and more. Best of all, you can get this good stuff for 25% off your order by clicking the link down below and using the code YN25. It's the perfect Christmas gift for yourself. Go ahead and pick one up. You've earned it. Now let's see what the MV's like out on the highway. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are out here on the 183 tollway heading out to Cow Creek on this motorcycle because I wanted to do a little bit of a distance ride. Uh, not super duper far. But I just wanted to get a sense for how it cruises on the highway, and uh, it's interesting. So I set the suspension to rider plus passenger, or rider plus luggage, not rider plus passenger. 
and this feels like it's sprung a little bit better for my weight now. Um, before it was feeling a little bit spongy, and when I hit bumps, it felt like it was doing a lot of work. Now it's a lot more stable. Uh, it feels a lot better. So I think given my advanced weight on this motorcycle, the Rider Plus luggage is good. I'd be interested to see what regular rider is sprung for. Uh, another thing I'm noticing is that this motorcycle has a ton of passing power. So I'm down in, I'm up in fifth gear rather. And if I want to get around this Tahoe, just roll on and yoink. I'm already doing, you know, quick, shall we say. Uh, it's really smooth and the power is pretty darn linear on it. And check this out. Now I got extra wind protection. <laughs> And one thing I can say as we start slowing down here is this motorcycle promotes really good posture. I feel like I'm, you know, like a proper English gentleman sitting down for tea on this motorcycle. Uh, my back is straight upright, like ramrod stiff. My feet are out kind of in front of me as if I was sitting in a chair. Um, it's a, it's a really, comfortable place to sit and it's weird because normally you get on a motorcycle and after a while you start to hunch you know you get your lower back just kind of tuckers out on you and you're just like nah I don't want the miles to go away this you know you're you're always sitting nice and upright um your upper body weight is over your butt and you've got a good amount of weight on your feet so it's actually a pretty comfortable place to sit even though it kind of feels like I've got, you know, a, a strict schoolmaster sitting over my shoulder telling me to sit up straight. I'm going to ruin my back by hunching over. So, I need to sit nice and upright. One thing I'm not loving, though, is the uh, passenger seat. The shape of it, it's literally hitting me right in the tailbone when I sit where I want to sit. I want to sit nice and far back and it's literally pushing on my tailbone. It's this hump that's right in the middle of my bee cheeks. And <laughs> I'm not sure why, but MV Agusta always has something on their motorcycles that's pushing into it. Hey, I found neutral. Holy shit. Okay, so you can find neutral on this motorcycle. It's just weird and difficult. But yeah, it feels like MV Agusta always has something on their motorcycles. It's designed to poke me in a weird spot. Um, like I'm just not sized appropriately for their motorcycle. Which I, it, I could be. I could not, you know, I could be too big or I could be too small or whatever. But it's always strange. They're, they're never perfectly smooth. I'll tell you what is super smooth on this bike is side to side. Holy cow, is it light. Wow. <laughs> that is so... Like, that's like my supermoto. Holy cow. Okay. Man. Maybe I do like this bike. Alrighty, guys. So, I have pulled over here because I'm really interested to figure out what the specs are on this motorcycle. I have not looked them up. I have no idea what it's making. My guess, uh, based on the butt dyno, is I'm thinking it's about 120 horsepower, maybe a little bit more, and then I think we've got, uh, I'm gonna give it like 70 foot-pounds of torque, something like that, maybe, maybe a little bit less, maybe like 65. Um, it feels kind of MT-09E with a little bit more zest, a little bit more panache. Ah, huh, here we go. We'll get it straight from MV Agusta. Let's see what they have to say for themselves. Stylish Freedom, starting at $19,500. Okay. Or, well, that's euros. So, I assume this bike was about twenty grand. Yeah, okay. I could see that. Muscle at any angle. Is it, though? I mean, it looks cool. It looks different. But muscle... I don't think so. Okay. Numbers. 110 horsepower. Okay, so I'm overestimating it a little bit there. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad. I feel like they, they usually have torque, though. Max torque. Here we go. 80 newton meters, which is... That's a real boy right there. Okay. Uh, 80 newton meters of torque. 
Uh, 59. Really? It's only 60 and 110? That's crazy. That's crazy. I would have I would have thought it was more. Okay. Now what about the weight? Maybe that's why it's feeling really, really light. Or really quick. Is because it's super duper light. Dry weight, 421 pounds? Really? Feels so much lighter side to side. Okay, so this bike has some interesting specs under the hood. Uh, something about the way it's set up makes it feel like it's got more than 110 foot foot pounds, 110 foot pounds. It feels like it's got more than 100 horsepower or 110 horsepower, uh, and more than the 60, 59 foot pounds of torque, which is weird because usually the numbers that you get out of a motorcycle are lower than the claimed figures. So that means it's actually probably making close to 100 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque. But it really doesn't feel that way. It also feels so much lighter than 421 dry and all that extra weight when you have all the fluids and stuff. What a weird package this is. I'm really not sure whether or not I'm gelling with it or whether it's just too deeply confusing for me. I will say that it handles really, really well getting it, you know, into. I've had it on a twistier bit of road than this, and we're going to end out on a twisty road. But this is a this is a really nice bike side to side. It feels really uh feels really light especially the slower you go let's just get it a little wound out here yeah it's crazy effortless through a corner these nice light sweepers are where it lives i'm still deeply vexed by this motorcycle. I'm not sure what, it, whether or not it's just too weird for me or whether it's like hitting me in just the right spot, but man, I, I like a lot of what this is doing and I think it's doing a great job about a lot of stuff. But then there's other stuff on here that, that drive me up a wall. So, Huh. It's like two ends of the same coin. Interesting. I'm going to keep riding and see if I can't start collecting my thoughts a little bit better. All right, guys, I have put down a few more miles on the old MV here. And I remember Yam saying that this is a motorcycle that he felt like the miles could just melt away on. And uh, I'm not sure I'm feeling the same about it, to be perfectly honest. Um, that nice upright chair stance that I'm in is nice until you realize that this windscreen, no matter where I put it, doesn't keep the wind off of me. Um, the wind is in, always hitting me in a weird place, and I actually end up preferring adventure bikes and touring bikes to not have this windscreen because it always dumps air in the wrong spot. I feel like I'm in this big cloud of just turbulent air. Like the, the smooth air stops uh, here, right here, at about this height. And if I raise it, it hits me in the eyeballs. So I'm really not enjoying my time sitting on the back of this. I feel like I'm getting tossed and jostled around a little bit. The seat. Also, the seat is a huge part of these, uh, you know, mile munching motorcycles. The seat on this, it's not the most comfortable seat I've sat on. Um, it's not bad, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's just not, it's not cradling me the way that I'd want for a motorcycle that I'm ostensibly gonna crush, you know, 400 miles on or something like that. Another thing that's annoying is uh, no cruise control. Oh wait, maybe there is. Hold on. Does it work? 
Or was the cruise control button just staring me in the face? And I'm just too stupid to realize it. Uh, honestly, I feel like cruise control is not activated because I don't have any like plus, up and minus. I don't have the, I don't have the plus and minus thing. I don't have, um, I don't have set and reset. A lot of the things on this motorcycle don't seem like they do anything. And another thing that annoys me, this is more about uh, slow speed stuff than at highway speed. But slow speed on this motorcycle, there's a, there's a significant amount of turn that you need to pull the throttle before it goes. And I'm not talking free play, because actually there's basically no free play on this motorcycle. Let me see if I can show you here. I'm gonna pull in the clutch and go straight. There's no free play in that throttle. However, let me show you this. All right, turn, 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 turn. Like there's where I start to feel the throttle come on. I want the throttle to be applied the second I start pulling on the actual throttle. If you want free play, dial in free play. If you don't want free play, fine, but don't simulate it in the throw of the throttle tube. I don't know that this motorcycle's doing it for me, guys. The, the more I ride it, the more I'm like, hmm, doesn't, it's, it's really, it's really an odd beast. It's really strange. And I rode it down some twisties. And man alive, on a twisty road, it's really cool. It handles so well and it holds the line really well. But, I don't know, all the other stuff is, is distracting me. I'm going to get to Cow Creek and uh, start finishing up my thoughts on this. I should be getting there pretty soon. Um, and we'll finish this off on a nice, pretty back road. How's that sound? Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the chill side of Cow Creek. I always take this road, or at least this direction on Cow Creek, when I just want to relax. Um, for some reason, going this way on Cow Creek here in Austin, or wherever the hell I am, uh, I always feel... Like, I, I just want to chill out. It feels like it's a little tougher going this way, so I just I take it nice and easy and just cruise. Which I think uh, defines this motorcycle really, really, really well. So, I've done some more thinking about it, and I do think that this motorcycle does have a little bit of a wanderer's heart, you know? Uh, I think it's, it's a cool bike that you could go out and potentially do an adventure on assuming you do a few things here and there to this bike um which you it's a little bit of a bummer that you might have to do it but we're going to talk about it in a second so first thing that i would do is i'd get a different windshield i was going down a road and there wasn't much of a cross breeze and i felt like i was getting the crap shook shook shaken out of me i was really just getting tossed around and uh, that really shouldn't happen when I have a big windscreen in front of me I'm thinking that it's just where this thing drops the wind on my head so I'd get a slightly taller windscreen uh, and that would help secondly I would get a model of this motorcycle that has the cruise control that works um, I've screwed around with this cruise control button and um, it just doesn't do anything it pulls up the cruise control menu, and then I can like I can click around in the cruise control menu and stuff, uh, or at least I can select it, but it doesn't do anything, which is really weird. So I'd get a version of this motorcycle with cruise control equipped. Uh, I would also opt for this bike to not have the smart clutch system. I don't like it. I really don't. I think it just it feels weird and, and foreign to me. Um, maybe if I spent a lot of time with it, I could learn to love it. But as it sits right now, I kind of hate it. Um, it feels it feels really weird, and, and the bike gets angry with me if I have the rear brake on for too long. I don't I don't know what's up. So. I would opt for not having the smart clutch, if that's an option. I actually don't know if it's an option or not. 
Last thing that I would need to change on this motorcycle is the seat. I do not like this seat whatsoever. Um, it keeps giving me wedgies as I slide around. Uh, just generally, it doesn't feel like the kind of seat that I'd be willing to sit on for two or three hours straight. Uh, I feel like I need to keep standing up and shaking my knees out and readjusting everything before I can sit back down on this bike. But okay, so that's the bad. What about the good? It handles really, really well. This motorcycle, it's on the side of the tire, it handles phenomenally well, honestly. Surprisingly so. I was kind of expecting a bike like this to, uh, to be like pretty good, you know? To feel fine. Um, it doesn't feel fine. It feels great. I'm actually softening up the suspension here a little bit because Cow Creek is really bumpy. Uh, and it's cool that you can do that, you know, that you can just have it do the thing and it's ready to go. It reminds me a lot of bigger adventure bikes where you can set the suspension based on the mode and all that stuff and it'll soften it up and make it a bit more pleasant of a ride if the road needs it. I also like the way that this engine sounds. I mean, it's just classic MV Agusta inline triple. It sounds awesome. Even if it's not giving me the crazy top end that it kind of feels like it is. But at that point, do you really care? If it feels like it's going really fast, then it might as well be, right? I don't know. It feels like this bike is a good way to just set back and relax and feel like you're doing a million miles an hour and really not. But don't get me wrong, it's no slouch. It's still a fast bike. It just doesn't feel blistering like the, uh... oh man, which one was it? The Dragster 800 RC. Um, same mill, just tuned down a significant amount. See, I mean, you really can get after it if you want. It's a, it's a surprising little motorcycle. So who do I think it's for then, uh, if it doesn't really tour all that well for me without a bunch of modifications, and it costs $20,000, um, I don't know. Because I'd have a hard time saying, yeah, you absolutely need to get this thing over, say, uh, Pan America or an R1250 GS. I mean, this is playing in that same pond, at least at 19.5 euro. I think that's about 20 grand. Which you're getting, you can get yourself a Pan America Special. Uh, the R1250 GS in its base trim. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think you can get the new uh, V2, the new V2 Multi for not much less than this. I think it's, I think the V2 Multi's like, I don't know, uh, 15, 14, 15. And I bet you it's gonna handle great. So, I'm not sure where this motorcycle belongs. It's a really interesting bike. But it would not be the one that I would go spend the money on if I'm getting ready to drop 20 Gs on a motorcycle. That being said, I, I did enjoy wandering a little bit with this motorcycle. I got lost on my way out here and, you know, I was just cruising through the hills, looking around. I, I don't feel the need to go super fast on this bike. I don't feel like I have to ring it out all the time to enjoy it. I can just chill. And that's that's kind of nice. It's nice to have the ability to just sit back and chill on a motorcycle. I'm sure if it had a sport mode, uh, it would be a little bit more peppy, but I don't know if it's got a sport mode or not because uh, I can't change the map. So I go to map and it says push map button to change. There's no map button. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on this thing. It's, it's interesting. It's for somebody, but it's not for me. Also, I would be, I personally would be the adventure dad who's talking about how they're getting ready to take their Pan America on some big 
long distance tour. They're gonna do the long way around, but on a Pan American. That's gonna be me. So I gotta have the dirt tires. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this sort of new format where I'm testing out the new GoPro, uh, which allows me to just kind of pull these vlog sections from the hip. It's a little less structured and a little bit more, uh, a little bit more discovery. I, I literally took you guys along the ride as I was discovering and figuring out what this motorcycle was all about. So, let me know if you like this format. Uh, if you don't, I'll go back to the old school stuff. And if you do, that's cool. This was fun. In the meantime, don't forget to check out Eurocycles down below. They've got all kinds of different motorcycles. They've got bikes like this, if this is your jam. And uh, big, fast MV Agustas and I know MV's got some cool stuff that they're getting ready to reveal at ICMA, so if you want to check out any of those new motorcycles, I bet you Eurocycles will have them. They don't just have MV's either, they've got all kinds of cool bikes. Click the link down below, check them out, and get a motorcycle shipped directly to your door. In the meantime though, I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later. All right, look, you don't have to lie to me. If you had time for one Yammy New video all the way to the end, you probably have time for another one. You should probably just click this link and watch the video right over here. I promise it's gonna be good. You won't regret it. Seriously, you should just, just click it. I'm sure it's good. We only make good stuff around here. You should, you should just watch it. Why are you still here?